So I'm going to cover something uh, today which um, I tend to talk about quite a lot when I'm looking at analysis um, and talk about how to kind of expand in your analysis. Uh, but it's something that uh, a lot of students don't tend to write about in the correct way. They really want to write about it. They really want to talk about it. Um, but it's not written about in the correct way. So I thought I'd address that today. Cumulative effect. OK, so just as I go through then, just as um, previous videos, um, please make sure that you uh, pause it so you can have a go at, uh, if there's a question on, for example. Um, so start off with then, what do you think community of effect means? Um, some of you might know already. Community means increasing or increased in quantity, degree or force by successive additions. OK, lots of big words there. Um, so just have a look, pause the video, just see if you can have a go what you think community of effects means in English. OK, so then um, let's have a look at this example. The cumulative effect of two years drought is that the farmers profits have suffered massively as so many of their crops died. OK, so basically what this means then in is, is that um, uh, the overall effect of this drought is that their profits have suffered and many of their crops have died. So all it means is overall. OK, you can see in the top left on the screen, it says the overall effect. So now let's translate that to English. Um, it means that we've got to look at kind of multiple words, put them together and talk about the overall effect. OK, something that a lot of students tend to do is that they look at the overall effect of one quote. Um, when it comes to the cumulative effect, we, we have to look at more than one quote and kind of stitch them together as though they're kind of like a jigsaw and take them from a different part of the extract. But we're going to have a go. OK, so let's have a look. So the way that I kind of um, uh, do this is that sometimes I'll try and think of different images, put them together. And what, what's the cumulative effect of those images put together? So these images represent someone called Bob. Um, I just want you to pause the video and then write down what you think about Bob from these images. What's the cumulative effect of these images? What do we think about this person? OK, hit pause and off we go. OK, so then. Um, these images then, um, I'm going to think of Bob um, as this aggressive, rude and unpleasant person to be around. OK, because as you can see from the images, he's getting into fights um, and he's arguing and being quite rude. OK, and so that, that that's the effect. That's what I can infer from these images. But I need all the images together to get to that conclusion. OK, right. Let's have a look. OK, let's have a look at Mira. OK, Mira, when she's holding her son when he's a baby, the Mira when he's older. OK, so we to pause the video and again, just have a go writing down what's the community effect of these images. Now, remember, these images are together. So you're thinking about um, overall, what do you think about her from this? OK, right. So the community effect of this is that it caused me to perceive Mira to be a motherly, loving person. OK, but I've got these two images together. I've seen Mira um, when her baby's little and Mira when her baby's older. Um, and that makes me think that she's motherly. OK, but if just I just saw one image, that effect would be lessened over time. Right. Um, something else that ties into the community effect is a semantic field. Um, now, some of you might know what that means. It's very similar to if we're looking kind of at lexical fields. Uh, basically, it's um, uh, kind of the overall almost theme or idea that's being produced by, um, by the words, but in this case, images. So these images represent a poem. OK, um, I want you to think about what the cumulative effect of this is and what semantic field it might create. OK, so just have a think, pause the video, have a think what semantic field this might create. OK, so the cumulative effect of this, of these images, is that it causes the poem to have a semantic field of love. OK, now I was thinking you have to talk about semantic field quite carefully. Um, you can't have, you know, like when, you, when you're talking about it, it's got to be, you know, looking at themes kind of thematically. So it's thematic. It, a semantic a semantic field of love or of war for example okay i was thinking thematic thematic and semantic both quite difficult to say okay so um it's caused the poem to have a semantic field of love right then so this is a poem so we're kind of thinking about um, unseen poetry here however we are going to have a look at Roman and juliet in a moment um so this is a poem called first love by brian Patton. but you need to pause the video and give the poem a quick read please
Okay, so as you can see, the poem is about falling in love and the kind of the feelings that associate with that. And um, it's quite a nice, it's quite a nice and seen poem actually. Um, and I want you to think about what is the cumulative, so this combined overall effect of the words highlighted. I want to literally ignore the rest of the words for now and just think what the, do these words in particular tell me to pause the video again, I feel like I say this all the time, and give that a go please. Okay then, so um, if I was you, I would have been looking at things like loving, bouncing, I might think about things like hopelessly in love, okay, and then overall, you know, I, I might think about um, looking at individual words as well, even the verb bouncing denotes excitement, okay, the narrator is excited about being in love, so I'm looking at these individual and that brings me to this conclusion, the, 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 the cumulative effect, I can never say the words in this pathway, the cumulative effect of these words is that the narrator appears excited about his first love. He dreams for her and pines, for her, feeling as though a century passes when he does not see her for two nights running. This then creates a semantic field of love. Okay, so that links back to what we just looked at. So you've got this cumulative effect that he's appearing excited. Okay, so all the time we're thinking about the narrator, we're thinking about what what are the is the authorial intent of the poet or of the writer. Okay, what do they want to portray to us? And they're going to portray that by looking at um uh at the you know putting these individual words together. I often say um if you struggle with cumulative effect, you want to think about um imagine if someone comes to your house for the first time and when they first come around you've got um, a union jack flag mug on your kitchen table okay it's the first time they come around and they don't really think much of it and the next time they come around you've then got union jack flag pillows on your chairs um, you might also have union jack curtain as well you might have a picture of the queen on the wall okay maybe maybe boris johnson tea towels i don't know okay now the originally the first came when you just had that mug they don't really think much about it um, but actually, the second time they come and they've got all of these things, the cumulative effect of that is that they're going to think you're patriotic, okay, that you're really into your country, um, okay, and, the, and you're, you know, very pro-British um, uh, and that you're maybe, you know, your family's very British, okay, um, and so that didn't happen the first time that they came. Okay, it's the got this cumulative effect of these series of things. The word bouncing on its own doesn't tell me about falling in love, but bouncing combined with loving, combined with dreamed, combined with hopelessly in love, um, uh, the best time, forever, endless, um, all of those put together, stitched together, creates that cumulative effect. So you can see how it's impossible to look at the cumulative effect of one word. It's going to be a series of words. Okay. Um, now let's have a look at applying this to Romeo and Juliet. Okay, so I just want you to pause the video again. I just want you to read through this. This extract comes from um, after uh, Romeo um, kills Tybalt, after Tybalt kills Mercutio. So Tybalt, just to give you context, is Juliet's cousin. Okay, and um, and so obviously she's feeling a bit, um, uh, she's feeling kind of a bit torn um, because you know she loves her cousin, but at the same time she's just married Romeo and is massively in love with Romeo. Okay, just give it a pause, please. And then can you read through this? Okay, then so um, you had a quick read through. Uh, so you can see that there's kind of a lot of juxtaposition here. And what we're going to do, though, because I know that a lot of students, and I'm, um, I'm going to talk about this at another time, a lot of students really, really do struggle with breaking down Shakespeare, okay? And I always say it doesn't matter. It's more about in, in understanding individual words. Every single one of you watching this can tell me what the word beautiful means, okay? Maybe not all of you can tell me where it says despise, Ed, what that means. Um, it just means despise, so like hated. Um, you know, maybe not all of you can tell me what mortal means, but, you know, all of you know what a serpent is, okay? Most of you are going to know about um, uh, the story, you know, of Adam and Eve and the serpent, okay? Um, so as long as you can look at individual words, it, it doesn't really matter. It's more about knowing where in the plot it comes from. And it's always going to tell you, you know, roughly in the story where it comes from, okay, in the narrative. So what I'm going to do is start off with, I'm just going to highlight positive and negative words. Um, usually I'll get my students to put uh, positive and negative signs just for ease on here. I've created um, like a little key. So you can see here then that in pink I've got the negative words and green I've got the positive words. Okay, now I haven't done all of them, so obviously I missed out. I haven't looked at beautiful um, under positive, you know, I might, I haven't looked at uh, paradise under positive, but I've just kind of picked out a few key ones that I first noticed after close reading the text. 
close reading as well, you know, we read it on a second, you know, we've read it first, we scan through first, close reading, then we read it afterwards and we start to kind of break it down um, and analyse it, that's close reading. Okay, at the top left on your screen, you can see it says connotations are these thoughts, feelings and ideas associated with the word. Very simply, they can be positive or negative, or they can be a bit, you know, these bigger ideas. So, for example, a tyrant is um, uh, someone that is an oppressive ruler of a country, um, so it's got very negative connotations. We might talk about the biblical connotations of dove or serpent. There's quite a few uh, religious allusions here. You know, we could talk about um, the dove being a symbol of peace, for example, and the serpent being the symbol of um, of evil and of hell. And that, that would be a really, really nice bit of animal imagery for you to there for you to do there with serpent and dove, for example. OK, um, now what the important thing is now is that I then kind of am able to put this together. So what you need to do is I want you to press pause, please. And I want you to have a go and write about the cumulative effect. You can either choose to look at the positive words or the negative words, or you can do what I'm going to do in my example, where I look at both of them in contrast. OK, so just hit pause and then give that a go, please. OK, then, so look at what I prepared earlier. This feels very blue, Peter. Um, right. So the community effect of words such as tyrant, fiend and serpent is such. Um, I think I meant to put is such that the audience are now led to believe um, Juliet now despises Romeo as he has slain her cousin. However, Shakespeare pairs these words with positive lexical choices just means word choices such as angelical um, honorable and gorgeous this juxtaposition allows us to understand Juliet's plight she is both madly in love with Romeo and heartbroken over the decision he made to kill Tybalt it helps us further understand her predicament and helps strengthen the theme of conflict in the play OK, so um, when we're thinking about this, then you can see that not only have I addressed multiple words, I've actually talked about differing ideas within it as well. And I've looked at juxtaposition. So I'm going to get error two marks for looking at the community effect, for looking at positive le lexical choices, for looking at juxtaposition. But I'm also going to get error two marks. That's, you know, when we're looking at um, uh, how the, the writer uses language and us breaking it down. Um, I'm always going to get... Um, uh, AO2 marks for the fact that I've looked at the theme of conflict, I've started to look at it, I've, you know, related these quotes to this bigger theme in the text, talking about how it strengthens it. Um, I could have got one step further, um, and what some of you might want to do is pause this and go and improve it. I could have talked about the images in our minds when we think about serpent, I could have looked at, you know, serpent juxtaposed to dove. But, you know, I want you to think that this is a snippet from a paragraph. I wouldn't just put this as a whole paragraph um, because obviously I'd be looking to answer a question. In this case, I was simply just looking at the cumulative effect. Um, if it was looking at the theme of conflict, I then very easily could have gone on and explained that. Um, uh, if it was looking at, you know, the presentation of Julia, I could talk. To, I could have talked about her being someone that um, is quite conflicted or someone that is quite weak, that can't decide um, how to, you know, how to feel and how to act. I could have talked about her being quite naive. Um, so there's lots and lots of lots of different things that you can do with the community effect. But, you know, the main thing I want you to take from this is that when you're looking at extracts, uh, for example, from Roman Juliet, A Christmas Carol, um, uh, Inspector Calls, I want you to think about that words come um, in patterns. OK, and you're looking for these word patterns all the time. Um, the writers choose the best words in the best place and the best order. OK, so you want to think about well, why they picked that word there. So that I'm questioning why have they done this and actually can I can I connect these words to other words in the text it's not just about looking at words independently it's thinking yeah these words are in these patterns um, the students that go and kind of are able to step back and look at these patterns um, are more likely to be able to get those perceptive marks um, and you know you know aiming for clarity but obviously at the same time we think actually how can we make these very clever comments okay thank you very much